I'm going to show you how to make a classic French dessert filled with sweet cream and dusted with powdered sugar. It's a recipe made to impress. And making a light and airy pat -a choux is a lot easier than you think. I learned how to make pate choux in culinary school and it's a really simple technique. It's made from common ingredients you already have in your kitchen and once the dough is baked, it's going to create these delicate, light, hollow shells that we're going to fill with whipped cream. Set the oven racks to the upper middle and lower middle positions. Preheat to 425 degrees. In a large, heavy bottomed saucepan, add one cup of water, one teaspoon sugar, half teaspoon salt, and a half cup unsalted butter. Bring to a boil over medium high heat and stir the mixture until the butter is fully melted. Turn off the heat and immediately add one cup of flour. Vigorously stir the dough with a large spoon until the flour is incorporated. Increase the heat to medium, constantly stirring the dough until it comes away from the sides of the pan, about four to five minutes. The dough should look relatively dry and should just begin to leave a film on the saucepan. Ooh, this is a little bit of an arm workout, but the constant stirring is going to help break down the starches in the wheat. It's going to absorb more water so that when it's baked, the texture will be light and tender. I've transferred the hot dough into the bowl of a stand mixer, and now we're just going to slowly stir it to cool it down. Use the paddle attachment. I stir on setting two. Let this cool down for about two to three minutes. And it's important to do this because once we add the eggs, we don't want it to cook and curdle. The temperature we're shooting for is 130 degrees or below. It's been about two minutes. I'm gonna check the temperature. This looks good. Now we can add the eggs. I'm going to add one egg at a time so that it fully mixes into the dough so that when it's baked, it's going to rise beautifully. I'm going to mix on medium low speed, setting four for about 30 to 45 seconds. add the third egg, you want to check the consistency. Sometimes you don't need to add the last fourth egg, just depending on how long you've cooked the dough on the stove top. You want the consistency to look like a cake batter. This one, I think I want to add one more egg. It's a little bit too thick. So I'll just add that in. This will be four eggs total. This looks perfect. It's pulling away like threads from the bowl and it's a nice pipeable consistency. I've added a large plain round tip into a pastry bag and I've sprayed it with a little bit of cooking spray so that when we add the pastry inside, it's a lot easier to pipe out. Just going to transfer this into the bag. Remove as much air as you can from the bag. I'm going to pipe two inch size balls about two inches apart from each other because they're going to expand about three inches once baked. The pastries have these little tails on top, so just dip your finger in water. I have about a quarter cup here and just lightly tap down those little tails. It's going to give a nice round finish on top. Just repeat with the second tray. To create a golden brown shell, we're going to add some egg wash on top of the pastry. I'm going to take one large egg and whisk it with one tablespoon of water. The proteins in the eggs are going to harden and create this really beautiful sheen on top of the shells. Make sure to brush the top and sides of each little pastry ball. Now we're ready to bake. Place the pate choux trays on the upper middle and lower middle positions. 
To ensure that the cream puff shell is baked up nice and tall with a dry, hollow center, we're going to use a gradual baking process. We're going to start at a high 425 degrees and then reduce it 50 degrees every 10 minutes until we hit 200 degrees. And make sure don't open the oven. We want to keep the heat inside so that it stays consistent. Wow, these are gorgeous. It's been about 60 minutes and I'm going to check really quick to see if they're done baking. It's nice and light. Just break it open and it shouldn't be doughy inside. It's gonna be a little bit steamy, but just not wet. So this looks good. I'm gonna transfer these to a rack and let them cool completely before we fill. To make the whipped cream filling, we're going to add two cups of heavy whipping cream, half cup of powdered sugar just to lightly sweeten the cream, and one teaspoon of vanilla. Going to whisk on medium low speed for about one minute until the mixture is just light and frothy and bubbly. This is gonna help the sugar dissolve in the cream. Now we're going to increase the speed to medium high, setting eight for about two minutes. This looks good. The cream should hold its shape into a nice stiff peak. This is exactly what we're looking for. And if you need to, you could process in five second intervals until you reach this shape. I like to make the whipped cream fresh right before filling so it doesn't lose any air. Now I'm going to transfer the whipped cream into a pastry bag and I'm using a large star tip and I like to twist the bag so that when I add the cream, it doesn't come out. This is a lot of whipped cream so you can work in batches. Just shake it down a little, just gently so you don't break all the air. And then I'm gonna set this aside. I'm going to cut each shell in half so that we have a top and bottom. Just turn it on the side. Ooh, it's nice and crisp. Oh, perfect and hollow inside so we could add maximum cream. <laughs> I'm going to fill each bottom shell with enough cream so it rises just above the edge. To switch things up, you could even add custard or ice cream into the shells. Add the little lids on top. I don't press the lids down to keep the whipped cream nice and tall. As a finishing touch, I'm gonna sprinkle some powdered sugar on top. Just add a light dusting. You can enjoy these right away or make sure you refrigerate them uncovered. I found that if you put a cover over, it's going to trap the moisture and make the cream puffs soggy. If you're looking for another fancy meal to serve with this dessert, check out my Beef Wellington recipe right here. It's really great for special occasions. I hope you enjoyed learning the science behind cream puffs, and if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. It means a lot when you do. See you in the next video. Add a little extra on top. Can't wait to serve these to the kids.